Hi, I'm Cray Price with Surface Water Solutions. Welcome to our next video in this series on what's new in HECRAS 5.0.4. In this video, we will cover the addition of internal boundary conditions. Now, if you're already comfortable drawing boundary conditions in a previous version of HECRAS, the only differences now are that you can draw them in RAS Mapper directly, and also you can no longer cross the external 2D flow area boundary line. In other words, if you had a previous model that did that, you're going to need to either commit to being outside or inside. It's either an external boundary condition line that will snap to the face of the external 2D flow area, or it's going to be internal, and you can put them anywhere you'd like now. So let's go ahead and dive right into this. Why would you want to do this? I'll start with the 2D model that we developed in our previous tutorial on RAS Mapper, where we covered the addition of refinement regions and brake lines uh, directly in RAS Mapper. Let's have a look at this 2D flow area that we've drawn. This is a catchment area or a watershed area for you Americans. Um, as we look at the external boundary of this 2D flow area, it covers the catchment divide. Now what I'm going to do here first is drop rain on grid or direct precipitation over this model and then we will go ahead and introduce a boundary condition inside of this model um, to show the difference. So remember the outside of your 2D flow area is an infinitely high glass wall. No water can penetrate that surface until I put a boundary condition line in to define where we can introduce flow or allow flow to leave. So what I'm going to do in this model is first of all drop rain over the entire catchment have it run off through the external boundary condition here, and then I'm going to take my rain on grid model and slice a profile line through it, extract a hydrograph from it, and then introduce that hydrograph as an internal boundary condition inside of this model. That way I don't have to redefine my 2D flow area and I can bring the flow in anywhere I'd like without having to change the boundary line of the external 2D flow area to match where I want to introduce flows. So let's dive into this now. First thing I've noticed here that I'm going to change is the name of my uh, perimeter. And last time around I left it as uh, perimeter one. I don't like that, so I'm going to change it here. Opening up the attribute table, one thing you'll notice, it's a little odd, this visualization and information tab and the features tab is the same thing as when you right click here and go to layer properties or attributes. So the properties are the visualization and information tab, the attributes are the features. So in case you were confused by that, um, I was as well, uh, but now that I've figured it out, it makes a lot more sense. Instead of perimeter one, I'm gonna call this Gold Creek Catchment. And I will change that here. And you'll notice it hasn't changed until I go ahead and stop editing and save those edits. Now it has changed to Gold Creek Catchment. So the first boundary condition line I'm going to add ends up being uh, probably the simplest, which is the external one right here. I'm going to allow flow to exit my system. As I do that, I'm going to go ahead and click on the boundary conditions line here. I will edit this layer and introduce a boundary condition line. My Create Features tab is on right here, so I can go ahead and click on the external boundary condition. Again, it will snap to the border. And now I'm going to check its attributes by right-clicking here, opening the Attributes table. And I have these options here for the 2D flow area and the connection type. Now, I wish they had a drop-down here, but uh, instead of the drop-down, I'm going to have to type this in. And my connection type is going to be external. So I'll close this window now and I've got a boundary condition that's been introduced. Now I'm going to go introducing an internal boundary condition, but that's also going to be the line along which I'm going to measure flow from my direct rainfall model. Now I don't like to draw things just by clicking around. I like them to be recoverable in other models and in other software. So I'm going to actually make this into a shape file. Uh, in the end, you could make this outside of HECRAS in another program. So I'm gonna click on the profile line tab add with the plus button from left to right looking downstream a profile line along which I'm going to introduce inflow. So I'm going to call this one Gold Creek Inflow Alignment and from this one now I've got a I'm going to export this one as a shapefile. That way it will be recoverable in other programs or in other models. Gold Creek Inflow Alignment and now it's exported that one, which I can now import as a break line. 
So I'm going to go ahead and uh, enter this in as a break line. Now I already have the center line break line defined from our previous tutorial, but I'm going to import a new one using the shape file that I just created. Inflow alignment center line, and now that's in there as well. I can give this a near spacing and far spacing just like I did in the previous one. And now when I exit this, I've got a new alignment right here. The next step is to enforce this as a break line. And you'll see I got a red dot arrow right here, which I can get rid of very quickly with my computational points. And when I start editing these computational points, I'll just go ahead and add a new one in here um, using my add feature. And now I've got that taken care of. Now I stop editing and it should allow me to save this 2D flow area within a geometry file. Now the next step is to add this break line or this uh, profile line that we've drawn as a boundary condition line. So I'm going to go back and start editing that layer and take my boundary conditions and import that same line as a boundary condition line. I open the attributes and now I can import features again, grab the same shape file that I've just grabbed for the break line. And now I get to define which 2D flow area I'm going to connect it to and whether it's internal or external. So it's going to be the same 2D flow area as the previous one, Gold Creek Catchment and it's now going to be internal instead of external. Once I've done that, if I go ahead and save my features, stop editing, save the geometry, I can see now that I've introduced an internal boundary condition along the cells that are now highlighted in red. So now I'm done with my geometry. I could have done this all in a geometry editor, but it's handy to do it in Raz Mapper with some of these new features. So I'm going to close out of Raz Mapper and go back to my main model. I'll save this just so I can get back to it later on.